you to go to the next slide oh. if you start talking sir thank you thank you very much for joining us oh, <laughs> thank you for guiding me all this and uh, inviting me thank you it is our pleasure and honor namaste at the moment what i see is um uh, the first page of my presentation yeah should i go to the next one um yeah yeah oh wow it comes out on automatically no, yes no. <laughs> he's doing it <laughs> so um i should say something about it yeah i would think so <laughs> <laughs> um well this is a uh, three characters from top to bottom um in the middle <laughs> and uh, letters are cast, uh, if it's a typeface, cast in a square body. Uh, that's um, uh, top is a heaven or sky, and then middle is a human or person, and then bottom one is a ground or earth or soil. And then they are all um, actually, origin is a uh, Chinese, Chinese writing, Chinese, um, uh, actually typeface as well but uh, um, probably almost three four five thousand years ago um, that's uh, developed it, it is uh, called ideogram or ideogram and then it's a it, it's in a way um, uh, started from uh, the pictogram just like a hieroglyphics and then uh, they stylized and uh, developed in a different way and then these um, the characters, uh, actually Chinese writing, um, uh, actually came from uh, China to Japan about 1500 years ago, 1500 years ago, apparently. And um, that came with uh, Buddhism, um, first, all originally from India, and then through China to Japan. So, um, Buddhist philosophy is very much um, part of a uh, foundation of a Japanese philosophy thinking. Um, and then Japan has a different uh, uh, pagan sort of or, uh, the religion called Shinto, and they mixed up everything. And nowadays, even Santa Claus is mixed up. And that's a kind of Japanese background, really. And then um, 1500 years ago was a um, big change, uh, although uh, Chinese writing uh, introduced, uh, brought into Japan, but the Japanese language is um, surprisingly very, very different from Chinese language. And linguistic term, uh, Chinese language is called polysyllabic. Intonation is very important, but the Japanese, they are the uh, uh, Chinese is a monosyllabic and um, intonation is uh, very important, but the Japanese is um, polysyllabic, a bit like um, a sort of uh, uh, Latin kind of uh, language. So uh, often Spanish and Italian people, they say very much uh, for them to easier to pronounce the Japanese sound and, and the vice versa. And uh, so, in um, Japan actually developed uh, their own phonetic alphabet. Um, so equivalent of ABC or many of Indian language as well. And then um, nowadays about, uh, not about, it's 46 um, phonetic script to write. So, uh, but in the middle of this uh, screen, you see uh, top to bottom, uh, heaven, human ground, they're all Chinese uh, characters. And then even uh, Japanese phonetic script are um, they, they simplified from um, some of the characters, not from all these. Um, it's Chinese uh, characters are normally uh, the um, more than a few thousand. Uh, so Every day is a newspaper uh, in order to read it. And in the old days, um, often people say, uh, took 20 years or so after uh, being born 
and then learning. And it's a um, very much a difficult thing, but Japanese. So uh, phonetic script is um, after 1500 years ago, so about uh, 1200 to 1000 years ago, uh, became uh, very much popular. And then the first one was adopted by really uh, first writing uh, is um, uh, women actually liked uh, writing all this uh, Japanese language the phonetically. And the famous um, novel, uh, which is uh, said to be the first novel written by woman um, in the world is a tale of Genji, uh, you must have heard. And uh, then in, uh, in the old days, often people called uh, Japanese phonetic script, kana, it's called, uh, is a woman's writing and because uh, men are always, uh, always too conservative and they always kind of proud of, they knew lots of Chinese characters and then uh, still stuck on the uh, difficult writing. But uh, nowadays we use mixed, um, because um, there are a great advantage of um, using Chinese characters as well, uh, which is um, later I probably, if I have a chance and then I can describe. Um, uh, very much now um, when you come across um, the um, face, uh, you know, the, um, the emoji, it's a, uh, moji is a Japanese uh, word. Um, it's um, emoji, it's a uh, very much uh, sort of uh, the, the sort of like a, a uh, um, development first sort of uh, uh, part of uh, kanji characters evolve. So, um, and then um, the square format is um, very much I just realized when uh, all of them asked me to join in this uh, the, the, uh, talk. Um, I started feeling um, my background is very much kind of um, uh, the, the fixed with a, a square. And then why that? And then as a typographer, yes, um, even if I nowadays I use a lot of um, Western alphabet and uh, even design it, but um, square is a quite interesting thing, I thought. So anyway, so I'd like to take you to uh, my background, uh, how I lived, and then uh, then probably I could um, talk about it more sort of uh, wider prospect uh, subject of it. Okay, next one. Um, yeah, welcome to Japan. And um, so I want to talk about fair and the square. So um, I guide you to first uh, how we live um, Japanese house. So there's an entrance and then that's just, you can see a door and then next. And this is typical of um, you come in to open the uh, front door and then you can see um, you, you have to leave the um, shoes, whatever you are wearing. And then uh, whether that's a barefoot or you have a, um, often people use um, the slippers up uh, in, inside the house or barefoot. This is a little bit wider sort of entrance and uh, you can see um, how they keep um, the shoes and bicycles, everything before you go into a living side. So next slide actually showing, you know, people visiting Japan uh, from different part of the world. They are asked to take off shoes. So getting into your room, uh, I mean, your next one, please. Very cluttered. But this is a typical of Japanese uh, living room. 
and you can see square um, cushion and table and very much uh, this is the environment I lived in when I was in Japan. Um, television is a bit old, this is an old photograph and telephone is in the middle, you can see. Next one please. Then uh, when you uh, going into the other room and this is another typical household but cleaned up because uh, you know, uh, guests are coming in and it's um, a floor and the sliding doors and then left hand side you can see the um, a bit of a garden and uh, you must be wondered um, um, the, um, how we sleep and uh, we sleep on the floor and uh, it's uh, called a stone, probably you know. Um, nowadays, um, even uh, in London, there are places called stone shop to sell mattress. A uh, mattress is kept, uh, right hand side is actually a little um, storage space. Um, it's also sliding door to open and then... Uh... So next one please. So you can see um, it's it's a bit more classy, uh, you know, uh, but it's not much difference. So um, mattress, uh, um, no mattress, uh, tatami mat is um, um, one to two ratio. Uh, it says and tatami is uh, actually it's a Japanese traditional sort of room uh, floor uh, flooring and. Um, uh, normally um, made of uh, woven soft rush straw. And uh, I had um, in your days, um, uh, somebody, uh, my actually um, predecessor sort of uh, came to uh, Europe and then asked, where do you live? And then I said, you know, Japan and the Japanese houses like this, like this. And then, and we sleep on the floor. And then the people thought, my God, you know, they're sleeping on, in a kind of cow shed or something. But it's very different, you know. It's uh, it's uh, higher than the ground level. And then we put straw, straw uh, you know, tatami mat. And then it, when he was asked, uh, well, we have a proper mat. Uh, on the floor and so it's it's very much comfortable and what is it made of and then he said it's a straw and then even worse you know um, the people in the west thought uh, uh, that definitely it's like a cow shed but anyway um, sorry I'm just uh, kind of digressing but and then the sliding door is called a fusuma it's um, uh, again one to two ratio and a sliding door and it's made of um, wood and uh, uh, paper actually. And then and, um, further uh, on is um, uh, bottom is a glass, it's a square format, but uh, top is um, translucent paper screen is attached. And then that's also sliding door, but um, it's called a shoji, top one. It's um, uh, another very uh, much uh, Japanese uh, uh, thing, uh, Japanese paper and translucent uh, light is very nice, soft light. And then outside you can see um, a garden, a bit of a green. And uh, often, easily, you can actually take off all this sliding door and then it's so open because the Japanese summer is uh, quite um, hot and humid. So take off all these sliding doors and then wonderful breeze comes in. And then that's another beautiful thing. Next one, please. The size of um, tatami mat or shoji screen door or sliding door uh, 
it's they they are all about three by six foot feet, and uh, one feet uh, Japanese equivalent is show say um, it's um, um, it's about uh, thirty. Um, just slightly bigger than a foot. And so next one, please. Uh, the, everything looks like a kind of a oblong or square shape, but um, the here and there, um, uh, Japanese has uh, interesting solution for uh, or uh, application of um, the, the angle. Uh, this is um, the, the coming from uh, different floor level to slightly up. And then often if it's uh, the, the, the right angle or uh, the, then it's, it's more like the, it's a, you might trip and uh, accident happen this way. And then, then very subtle way Alerting, uh, you know, there is a different level. It's a very effective. Um, so this is a kind of a design, uh, you know, uh, other way. Um, I learned without really sort of realizing it. And then, so another, next one, please. Then um, the, We've been seeing Japanese uh, the room, but this is a corridor. Corridor is uh, um, also which is about three three feet, um, so about ninety centimeters or three feet long. And then, and the uh, outside sliding door is a uh, mainly glass. And then, when typhoon comes and or heavy rains, heavy weather, strong wind, and then they have another particular sort of sliding door outside of um, the just outside of a uh, uh, glass sliding door. Um, it's a uh, more sturdy wooden door. So that way, it's very much uh, Japan is protected for um, bad weather. And, uh, but uh, important is openness. Next one, please. So uh, you are in Tokyo and then you visited uh, Japanese uh, normal household, average household. Now, um, one of the, um, the uh, the more bigger buildings uh, to visit. And this is a National Museum of Western Art in Tokyo. Uh, that it was established about 60 or 70 years ago. And I think 60 years ago, yes, um, 1960, around the 1960s. And then uh, designed by famous architect, uh, the, Corbusier. Next one, please. So this is a famous uh, Corbusier's module. It's a, uh, it's a square format. And then also um, the three, uh, one to two ratios, um, human size and uh, Right hand side, uh, four squares, uh, actually the, um, the museum's floor plan, uh, ground floor and uh, first floor, second, third floors. And uh, Corbusier, uh, I heard, uh, he was uh, quite impressed by uh, Japanese unit system for the architecture. And it's been traditional for many, many years. So, um, Maybe later on we go back to uh, the um, uh, another um, uh, picture for uh, Japanese household um, one to two ratio of tatami mat and uh, shoji screen, suma uh, or glass door. Um, so uh, these are all two squares, 
uh, or sometimes even uh, tatami mat is uh, just one square to make more interesting arrangement. And um, uh, so these suppliers are actually, it's um, specialized. So people who make tatami mat, they have a, they're, uh, they're specialized. So, uh, you know, the um, craftspeople, uh, producers, and uh, shoji screen as a different ones. And so in the mid, uh, in, in, in an ancient time already in Japan, they are um, very much um, adapted to a mass producing a more efficient way. Anyway, the next one, please. So this is the inside as you come in. And then it's um, just uh, any museum, but um, in the middle is a square seating, uh, the stool. And then over there is a square um, entrance and a square painting in the middle. And next one, please. This is a Monet's. Uh, it is, uh, this is the one actually exhibited in that museum. So definitely we must have a square in Japan. Next one, please. The very openness is important. It's a grand level of um, museum's um, reading room. And um, famous um, uh, Corbusier's Pirate is, uh, you know, the building is supported with a big um, pillars. And so uh, uh, this sort of thing is uh, very much, um, you know, uh, it's a modern um, house uh, or buildings. Uh, Corbusier's influence is, uh, yes, very big. Next one, please. Uh, this is a, maybe Colbridge must have given me lunch like this. Next one, please. So, making very efficient way. Square lunch, next one, please. Presentation is uh, quite important for yes, inviting guests and then uh, giving lunch. Next one, please. Suddenly, it's uh, different. It's um, I'd like to talk about um, uh, a bit more uh, my own side of uh, profession, uh, designer as a designer. It's a Lego. Um, it's a square and. Um, Interesting thing is Lego, you know, horizontally, vertically, or um, the uh, from top to bottom, left to right, horizontally. Um, you can make many different shapes. So square logo. Let's see other square logo. Okay, next one, please. It's a very well-known international brand, isn't it? Next one. This is a London School of Economics, uh, very important institution. Uh, they, um, next one, Financial Times. Next one. General Motors, Microsoft, Uniqlo. Uniqlo is, um, it is um, a Japanese company, but now international. And um, left hand side is um, Japanese phonetic script uh, derived from 
uh, Chinese characters, but uh, dropping, they, um, they, they I mean, it's simplifying everything, but just retaining um, the part of the um, Chinese characters, and then uh, the, the, um, the sound is uh, just fixed, only one sound to pronounce. So left hand side up is a U, and then next uh, right hand side of knee, and then come down and uh, bottom left is Ku, and then bottom right is Ro. In this case, it's a horizontal reading, starting from left hand side U, Ni, Ku, Ro. Okay, next please. This is a one to two ratio. And uh, before this, uh, actually the economist, uh, the name is placed in a slightly different uh, oblong shape. But um, this is quite neat to me. Next one, please. This one is also uh, that's an independent television network or newspaper or whatever. It's um, design is also two squares together. Okay, next one. Three squares. Everyone knows. So next one. It, it, it is square has a very interesting, um, you know, sort of nature. You know, uh, this is a, always I liked from uh, my um, school days when I was little. Three by three, nine square, and then four by four, 16 square. When you put like way, and then um, it's an uh, equal number of squares and, and the uh, 5, 5, 25. It's, um, it's an Archimedes, uh, no. Pythagoras, um, the, um, yes, the next one, please. Um, so, um, as a typographer, I'd like to talk about um, not just the square, but um, what's in it, uh, or the logos, when you design logo. And then this is the before, after. Square is absolutely identical, but, um, the, sorry about the color is uh, slightly different, but uh, I, I just didn't have a time to make it exactly the same color. But it, it is just, um, you know, when you just look at the, um, the arrangement of letters, before is, um, it's uh, just normal typeface to be set and then in uh, placed into the square and typeface is called uh, Scala. Yes, it's uh, uh, middle of uh, 1900. So about uh, 25 years ago or so, uh, it was uh, newly designed by Dutch designer, uh, typographer, type, type designer. And Scala uh, was uh, quite, um, uh, popular around that time because lots of people are uh, gradually sort of uh, fed up with uh, always Helvetica and it is very nice, um, uh, it's kind of quirky but um, a nice um, uh, sort of human touch in it, not clinical 
and very nice. So Royal Academy really wanted every publication uh, is um, set in Scala. And then so they wanted to use the, uh, their um, logo as well. But something sort of not satisfactory. And uh, so uh, after they changed it this way, when you look at it and um, more carefully, not only just um, capital letters R is uh, much larger than, and but um, the lowercase uh, more or less the same. However, a little bit uh, closer uh, to each other. So set tighter, which is um, more uh, emphasis on the um, the uh, kind of together uh, and um, also um, the when you see uh, lawyers L academies D and the uh, arts T um, it's um, more or less aligned and then that gives um, it's not um, kind of too rigid or anything, but it gives uh, some uh, kind of order and cleanliness, I would say. Um, so everything is more together. So that is the um, difference. Um, so um, space is important, but also when you place things and um, how you place it and, this, and then certain making certain kind of um, the uh, arrangement for tidiness, I would say. Um, so that's a, a different sort of um, often uh, typographers or type designers and then uh, graph designers for designing a logo. Um, this would be the uh, often people do this kind of thing. But um, now, um, when you visit um, Royal Academy, and then they changed to a new new logo, which is just an R and A, which um, when I I was given this task. Um, the 20 years ago, and then they used it until um, about a few years back. And then, uh, so it lasted about, uh, you know, nearly 15 years or so, uh, logo changes. Um, but at that time, I uh, they suggested rather than full name, uh, they just R and A to um, to it would be um, much stronger. And then now they are doing it that. Uh, that's another sort of, so next one, please. Uh, moving away from square, uh, it's um, another uh, before and then after. And top one is Gil Sans to put the um, fairly long name uh, inside its a logo, but it's not really uh, kind of orderly. Uh, I mean, it's fine if you are given, um, I mean, you're shown, um, but the bottom one is a uh, lot more orderly, isn't it? And the bottom one is a different typeface. It's um, but very much similar to Gilsan's and again, like uh, Royal Academy's logo, um, 
new one has um, some kind of tidiness and uh, what's the difference when you start looking at S uh, C I T Y and then ampersand is a smaller because sitting city and the gives is a very long so and then and is um you don't need to be so big so um arrangement for consideration of for arrangement is um certain sort of uh, not only just a typographic but um the linguistic side of consideration would be useful and then c o a um extreme left um also nicely sort of arranged. Often this sort of uh, arrangement is uh, required for uh, page setting, um, the rounded letter or uh, A like sort of, um, it's uh, different from um, squarish letter. So often typographers or typesetters, compositors, they do um, the, uh, the adjustment for the um, every line of uh, typesetting. But when you do uh, this kind of thing, also looks much neater. Next one, please. It is away from um, square, but actually origin is a square. And then by now, uh, you must have noticed it is, it's a Fibonacci number. And then one plus one is two, and then three, five, eight, 13, 21 and so on and then always the um, ratio is 1 to 1 1.618 and just um, infinite sort of number but more or less uh, you can say 1 to 1.6 and uh, it it draws beautiful um, traces beautiful spiral and many uh, natural sort of flowers and plants and uh, growing and in this sort of forms so square is a kind of origin and um, uh, square is not just always just a fixed it, it's a beautiful organic uh, it will create okay next one please and this is a just a application of uh, design um, actually the um, typeface is uh, redesigned so um, I mean the um, looks like a Gilsans, but Gilsans is also uh, the, it's um, based on Edward Johnston's um, underground alphabet, London underground alphabet. And then, and, uh, so they're all um, just improvement of it or um, particular uh, use of it and different uh, variations. And this uh, city and the guilds one is um, a, a, another sort of derivative of it. Uh, so origin is uh, Edward Johnston's um, alphabet. And then Edward Johnston's underground alphabet is proportion is uh, really uh, comes from uh, Trajan columns, um, the, which is uh, first century of um, 
a Roma, Roman alphabet. And um, uh, it's, it, it is uh, proportion is very beautiful. Next one, please. So um, it's um, Trajan Coleman's um, adaptation of uh, the modern architecture. Next one, please. It's uh, about eight foot high, large um, steel door. Okay, next one, please. Um, coming back to uh, Japanese um, phonetic script, this is called hiragana, and then 46, and uh, starting from this time, this time is top right hand corner, because we write from top to bottom, and uh, also uh, left to right, but anyway, so, uh, first, um, vertical column, um, vertical row, or it's A, A, and the next one is called E, is I, U is uh, U, and then E is E, O is O. Then consonant is attached from top to bottom is a K, so Ka, Ki. Ku, ke, ko. Next one, sa, shi, su, se, so. Ta, chi, su, te, to. Na, ni, nu, ne, no. Ha, hi, fu, he, ho. Ma, mi, mu, me, mo. Ya, i, yu, e, yo. So, i is very much like, um, the, uh, the vowel sound of Japanese, um, the right hand side, extreme right hand side, the second one down is so E is so it used to be different E was placed there, and in the old days, people pronounced it slightly differently. So, yeah, E, U, and the E as well. And um, so nowadays, it's some. Um, it's completely dropped, and so uh, it's uh, left open. Then next is a vari rurero, and then again wa is um, wa we u we wo. So we don't have um, three of them. And then um is the um, just uh, yeah, convenience and just place there. But n is a um. So all together is 46 kana letters. And then as you, uh, as long as you uh, learn uh, these 46, just like uh, 26 if you learn, and then you can write English and you can write Japanese. But um, the, uh, um, entirely written, uh, the Japanese or typeset um, with uh, 46, it's very hard to read because we are so used to uh, mixing with uh, Chinese characters. A bit like, uh, as, I, as I said, you know, phonetic script with an um, emoji in it. Then, but emoji is uh, so crude still because it's like a um, you know, few thousand years pictogram, um, but uh, kanji character, uh, so-called Chinese characters, uh, the ideogram is an uh, ideo, is ideas in it. And then few um, the different um, elements to make one character, and then which means um, say, um, so the heaven and human and us, but uh, then uh, it's lots of different um, uh, characters and a subtle difference of the heaven 
uh, or because it's a sky or um, you know atmosphere or and then a human or person or um, you know uh, male or female man or woman or difference and uh, then the earth is uh, whether that's soil or, or you you mean um, you know um, a road or uh, surface or um, then Chinese character combining it together and they expressing uh, lots of uh, the, the subtle things. So um, Japanese um, the normal uh, reading text, uh, books or newspapers, magazines, about um, 70, 80, or depending on the subject or depending on the who is going to read, um, about, I would say, around 80% of uh, phonetic script like this, and then uh, 15, 20% or so are uh, Chinese characters mixed it. But when I have a chance, and then I can describe that, it's enormous advantage. Um, it's so next one, please. When you learn um, 46 characters, and um, it's, uh, it's a bit boring, but uh, it has um, this Pokemon stuff as well. So, you know, Japanese kids, they can learn. When you see um, uh, uh, right hand side of the top, letter A, and then uh, right hand side of letter A is you can see the um, the alphabet A, it's, and uh, left hand side is a little uh, character is uh, katakana, which is also same A. It's a, it's in a way you have um, the I mean in a uh, the, the Roman uh, alphabet, um, the capital letters and the lowercase letters, that sort of way. And then uh, middle one, main one is called the hirakana. And then uh, left hand side, the small one, it's a katakana. The katakana is often uh, used for describing phonetically uh, foreign language. So, uh, 46 by 46. So, uh, yes, uh, 92 characters. Very good. Next one, please. Um, 46 characters. Uh, actually, it's uh, written in ancient, uh, it's a poem, and uh, 48 has been used, uh, plus in one more, but 48. Um, the, as I described uh, bottom here, it's called Iroha poem, because instead of Aiueo, uh, it's uh, in the old days, um, Japanese children uh, started learning Iroha. It's um, because it's all uh, necessary 46, or in the old days, 48 characters uh, is learned in this way. And um, this is a beautifully written by must be a good calligrapher uh, or person who can write beautifully with a brush script. And um, it's all hiragana. And it's a very much like, um, you know, the beautiful uh, the Italic script or uh, Arabic beautiful um, writing sort of. And not like the, um, the the kanji character, which is um, very much dense and uh, very squarish, but it's uh, flowing. And uh, what's written is it's um, the quick brown fox jumps over lazy dog. It's uh, all twenty six letters are um, the. 
you can see included it. The top one, Iroha, this Japanese poem, is um, no um, the, the same letters is used. Very cleverly done. Who wrote this? And then what it means? It's a beautiful letter. So next one, please. This is a translation of Iroha. Although it's sent still lingers on, the form of a flower has scattered away. For whom will the glory of this world remain unchanged? Arriving today at the younger side of the deep mountain of evanescent existence. We shall never allow ourselves to drift away intoxicated in the world of shallow dreams. And the poem is written by the monk called Kukai, uh, or we, we also call it Kobo Daishi. And he, he was a um, young um, Buddhist uh, or scholar. At that time, everyone had to learn Buddhism and their writing, reading. Uh, so only just um, a you know, couple of centuries after the uh, really um, uh, writing system and then Buddhism uh, brought from China uh, or from India through China to Japan with the Chinese characters because it, it Japanese, uh, they didn't have a writing, uh, didn't any letters. So he was one of the scholar and then young, and then he was sent to China to uh, study more. And then he was going to India even, but um, the, um, the, the journey and uh, his um, staying in China uh, was quite limited and short for many reasons. And then he came back, but he learned a lot. And he's the one um, who actually, uh, it is said, he was the inventor of Japanese kana script. There. So, are you well or iroha? And then that um, the poem was written by him. Amazing. And he was not only just um, the philosophy to learn or um, the, the religious practice to, the, to, to bring to Japan, but uh, he is um, not only just an accomplished calligrapher, so-called, but uh, engineer and uh, invent, um, the engineer and the uh, architects, and um, it's uh, many uh, other technologies he also brought in. They often um, the people um, regard him like um, the um, ancient uh, Japanese of bit like um, kind of Da Vinci sort of uh, figure, uh, although he didn't really um, it um, Mona Lisa like sort of paintings, but and um, so around. Uh, his uh, time, uh, of course, uh, he must have involved um, the 
huge temple was also built. Could you next one, please? When you go to Japan, now you can visit Japanese style house, uh, which is um, it's Daibutsu Den, it's called. Daibutsu means uh, big Buddha, and Den is uh, it's a Den, Sanctum. And uh, then it's a uh, other name is a Todaiji, it's an Eastern Great Temple. It is a huge uh, building and not far from Kyoto. So uh, about half an hour by train and then it's a beautiful countryside and a little, uh, nice city. And um, it's the influence is amazing, isn't it? And inside, as you come in, next please. Big Buddha is meditating. And you can see how small we are humans. He has uh, once a year, is a shampoo. <laughs> So this is a um, sort of size of it you can see and the right hand side you can see the uh, his, uh, profile. Next one please. So this is a sample of how we write um, from top to bottom or left to right, and then how hiragana, katakana, or you know, and then Chinese origins, kanji characters are um, combined together. Uh, meaning is heaven does not create people above people, does not create people below people. And then, as you can see, um, important part of the words are placed, um, the uh, used Chinese characters, because top one is then, I, we don't have to spell out heaven, but only just one, two, three, four, five, four um, strokes to make heaven. And uh, human, only, only two strokes in the middle one. And bottom end, only three strokes for earth or you know, ground. So um, only a little bit more complicated uh, kanji character is the, um, if the horizontal writing is a bottom fourth line in the middle uh, character, is um, actually to make or create or the, depending on the um, you know, use of it, it's uh, um, meaning changes. So that's a, a big difference from any uh, other writing uh, form, I think. Um, so you can see the great advantage of mixing with a Chinese origin ideogram with our phonetic script. So this is uh, what we write. Uh, and then all characters, uh, whether that's a simple or not, everything is uh, placed in a square. Um, so because in the old days, uh, every character is cast on the um, metal body. So easier to sit and um, so square is quite uh, useful. And then I didn't realize um, I actually grew up in a square form, but um, just uh, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think just what I wanted to present at the moment is um, 
just about this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.